We have stu student athletes uh, here. We have Aaron Estrada, Rylan Griffin, and Grant Nelson. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions for the student athletes. Start right here in the second row. We'll get a mic over to you. For Aaron, just how do you talk about Grant's play a little bit? And then you, you had a really good game as well. It seems like it's obviously do or die at this point for you and your basketball career as well. That's got to be exciting to be in the Elite Eight now. Uh, yeah. Uh, Grant's performance yesterday was historical, I feel like. Um, and by the numbers, too, you know, he was the fourth player to have 24 points, 12 rebounds, and five blocks. Uh, that's super big time for him. I'm happy for him. Uh, he kind of took over. That's late in the second half, like we needed him to. Uh, everybody on our team pretty much knew he was capable of that. And just to, like I said, just to see it uh, happen in March, you know, probably the biggest game of his career throughout his college career so far, um, I was really happy to see that from him. And then for myself, um, you know, I just tried to stay aggressive uh, and just take what the defense was giving me. And uh, yeah, it feels good to be in the lead. We'll go next in the fourth row. Out of the Cone Block, Arizona PBS. Rylan, you put great defense on RJ Davis, you know, ACC Player of the Year, first team All American. What's kind of your mentality going to the game with that? Uh, just don't let him get going. Um, it was a team effort. I feel like uh, it wasn't just me. I feel like I got help from like all my teammates. Um, made it hard on him. You know, he's a great scorer. So, you know, I had to study a little extra for him. But, you know, just knowing him, he was the ACC Player of the Year and, you know, just taking the challenge. Knowing that, um, you know, I think they pretty much beat us in every other category. He just had a, a, a game that he normally doesn't have. So I feel like that, like, held them back a little bit. And uh, we were able to get the win. Were you always up for the challenge to do that? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. I just guard whoever the coach puts me on. I'm ready to guard whoever they put me on. We'll go to the third row over here. Uh, for Grant Ryland, the last two games have been really tight until the final minutes or in the final minutes, and you finished strong both times. What's allowed you guys to do that? Uh, I think all our preparation up to this point, uh, especially I think our non-conference schedule really had a big part to do with it, uh, how we scheduled playing against some of the best bigs and some of the best guards in the nation. Uh, I mean, I think, I think even though we lost those games, we learned a lot, and I think like this is the best time of the year that we can come together, and we have these past two games. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, I mean, it's been a tight game for the last two, and you finished up strong. What's the last two? Uh, just staying together and, and being a team. Uh, we went, we've already been through adversity before. Like he said, those six losses, like we've already seen adversity multiple times. So we know how to handle it a lot better. And it's just, it's winner go home now. Back then, it was like we knew we were going to play another game. Now, like, yeah, we either fix it right now or the season's over with, and we're going to be in the locker room sad. So uh, just knowing that and playing for each other, helping us close these games out. Next over here on the right. Uh, you guys have played Clemson before. What do you remember about that game, that takeaway? I think it was in November. And then when you're preparing for tomorrow night, do you go back and look at that game, or do you care more about their recent games uh, here recently in the tournament? Uh, I think there's a lot to learn from the last time we played them. Uh, like I think we fronted the post a little too much, gave them too many angles, uh, their bigs, and then we let their shooters get hot. Um, so I think we got a lot to learn, but also, I mean, that was the beginning of the season, and I feel like a lot has changed for them, and same with us. So, I mean, we're definitely going to make some uh, changes on the scouting report, and I, I mean, I think, I think we're going to do our best to do what we can to stop their best players from getting hot. Jordan next here in the second row. Uh, Jordan Mendoza, USA Today. Um, you know, Alabama is primarily a football school. Everyone knows Alabama is a team that's always winning national championships on the football field. Now, as a basketball team, you guys have something to do with that no basketball team at Alabama has ever done before. You know, what would it mean f to have the Crimson Tide make its first ever Final Four in school history? Any, any one of you guys? Uh, it would mean a lot just being probably legends on campus. Um, you know, they always say where well, legends are made, so just uh, making the Final Four would be, we would be a historic team in um, Alabama history. Just being a part of that just would be great, but um, it's not going to be given easy for sure. Like, Clemson's a great team, 
So, you know, in order for us to get that, we're going to have to work really, really hard and play really, really hard in a really, really good game tomorrow. So we'll focus on the game first, and then all that other stuff comes after. Aaron or Grant? I kind of just agree with Rylan saying, I think we're more so just trying to focus on the game right now um, and just look at, you know, the history behind it and everything after that. All right, we'll go next to the second row. Uh, this question is for Aaron and Rylan. It's about Grant. What does his game do for the team? How does it kind of open up things for everybody else? Uh, I think Grant is a very versatile player. You know, he showed yesterday he could shoot the three off the dribble, off the catch. He can take it in the post. He can drive. So I think for us and our offense, it kind of just opens it up for everybody else, especially when he gets going, because, you know, we have so many great shooters on our team. So if they did start doubling or helping or whatever they wanted to do, we have a counter for it in every aspect. Uh, for Grant, yeah, he's a, like, like I said, it's a different, like, playing with, play with Chuck the first year, Grant different year, they're, they're two different bigs defensively. Grant is like a great mobile big. He can switch on the guards, like yeah, like yesterday. Like he switched on to R.J. Davis, and made two big plays, had two big stops. That's something that uh, wasn't Chuck's strength, but it's Grant's strength. So like we played a Grant stress on defense. So uh, he's a big time defender. He had five blocks. He was in the, the company with Tim Duncan and all the other Hall of Famers. So just he's been great defensively lately. And uh, we know he's up for – he's got a, a big challenge tomorrow, but we know he's going to meet the challenge and accept it. Keep it in the second row over here. Yep, uh, Mike Rodak with 247. Just for Trelly, this was kind of a homecoming back to California. Hasn't been able to play yet. Just what have you said to him and just where is he at mentally right now? For you, yeah. Uh, uh, just, you know, I talked to him. He said he wants to play, but, you know, he – he he also wants us to win, so he he doesn't want to do anything like he's handling his business with the doctors day to day or whatever. So he you know he's just watching right now, but he's been a great like coach on the sideline. So you know he's not playing, and of course he wants to play, but he's been a great coach on the sideline for us and getting us hype and just being a great teammate. So uh, even though he's not playing, we still feel his presence all over the court. Third row. Katie Windham with Bama Central. For any of y'all, um, you already talked about playing Clemson earlier this season. Is there any or a little bit of revenge factor in this game? Or for y'all, is it more focusing on what y'all can accomplish um, in reaching the Final Four? Uh, I think as us being competitors, there's definitely a revenge factor. I mean, nobody wants to lose to a team twice, you know, especially who you think you could beat. <clears throat> um, so I think that's just going to add even more fuel to, our, to us, um, and we're just going to make us play harder. Do we have any other questions here in the room? We'll start in the back row. Uh, Kyle Kensing for uh, Flow Hoops. This is for uh, for Aaron. Uh, you know, when you enter the transfer portal, you're a two-time conference player of the year. Was was it there any difficulty in adjustment? Where you know one night you can be the guy who's putting up twenty, another you need to be the guy who's the defensive stopper. Was, was it difficult at all going from being like the guy that was your team was focused around to being kind of more of uh, the part of the whole sort of uh, overall the five? Yeah, I don't think it was difficult. Um, I think I adjusted pretty well, um, and I'm I would say I'm a winner at the end of the day. You know, I just want to win. You know, so whatever the team needed me to do, whether it's scored at night. You know, rebound, get assists, play defense. Like I'm going to do it. So I think coming to Alabama was an easy adjustment for me. Go to the third row right here. Josh Peter with USA Today for Grant. What's life been like since last night? Are they parting in Devil's Lake? Are you getting bombed with uh, text messages? What's happening? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of love coming from Devil's Lake and North Dakota as a whole, which which has been amazing. Um, I mean, even before this game, just making it to the tournament and winning the first two games, I mean, just been getting a lot of love, even though, I mean, I feel like I didn't perform how I should have. I feel like I kind of let my teammates down. But, uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of love from North Dakota. 
All right, let's go over to Zoom. We have Joe Reedy. Yep, thanks. Grant, just uh, that first matchup against Clemson, what kind of matchup problems do does uh, Holland Scheiflin uh, present for you? Um, I mean, they could both get rebounds, which hurt us last time. Um, they're both physical, and I think, I think our scouting report wasn't wasn't perfect. Uh, we didn't follow it how we should have. And I mean, we got a lot of adjustments to make. We're still kind of learning our role def defensively as a team. And I mean, I think we've we've grown a lot, especially in these past three games. And I mean, I think that'll help going into this game. We'll continue on Zoom. AP Steedham. Yeah, AP Steedham, AP and Kelly, as we see, it's indicated radio. These are one of the players. What happened in the last Clemson game that you'd like to see a turnaround? You mentioned the rebounding. Any other facets of the game that you'd like to reverse? Uh, I would just say we need to uh, just guard the post a little bit better. Um, and we need we can't let their shooters come off of screens as easy as they did and hit threes. Um, they were playing as good as they as as good as anybody in the country at the time when they beat us. Then they had a little fallback, but now they're back to playing like that team that we played earlier in the season. And um, so, you know, we just got to make adjustments from that game. I think that's a good game to go back and watch because um, it was against us. We already played them already. Like, it, we could, we should use that to our advantage. We, we lost, so we obviously made a bunch of mistakes. So just watching that game and making sure uh, we don't make those same mistakes and, you know, we come away with the win this time. We'll come back to the room in the fourth row. Go ahead. Uh, for Rylan or Aaron, uh, Jonah Carell, Arizona PBS. Uh, Clemson, they really slowed down Arizona, made it more of a, a grinded out kind of game. And I know you guys um, played a really high octane offensive game last night, but against GCU it was a much more scrappy physical game. So can that, um, that game prepare you guys for what you'll face against Clemson? Uh, yeah, I think it definitely can prepare us, but I ultimately think it just comes down to us getting stops. I think that's what really creates our pace. And when we play fast is when we get stops. So if we're able to just continue to get stops, we'll be able to run on anybody we play against. Anybody here in the room have any additional questions for the student athletes? How about anybody on Zoom? Please use the raise hand function if you have any questions. We have. An additional question from AP. Yes, AP Stedham of AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Well, Y'all had a pretty good night shooting. Um, why was that? Did you like those rims, the lighting? What was the reason y'all played the shot so well? Um, I, I, we were getting good shots. Um, uh, we shoot a lot, shoot around. You know, we know we're going to have to shoot threes in the game. Um, and, you know, it's just confidence. I uh, feel like, you know, we shoot a lot of shots in the off season, um, during the season, and even right now, uh, to, to shoot these type of shots in these type of games and make them. So I think that's just a confidence thing with us, you know. Um, obviously, everybody on the team, we feel like when they shoot the ball, is going to go in. So just everybody having that confidence helps you be able to make shots. Do we have any other questions here in the room for the student athletes? All right, thank you guys. You're all set. We'll have Coach Oates up here momentarily. Coach, we'll have you begin with a opening statement, then we'll open up for questions. Our Decided to be in the lead eight. We uh, never been to a Final Four at Alabama. It, neither is Clemson, I guess. So, got um, two schools trying to get to their first one. I think everybody will be amped up, ready to play. We're, we're trying to get healthy. Guys, kind of saw Pringle limping around out there. He had a heel bruise. He's been fighting through the year and get flared up. So he's getting treatment all day. Hopefully, we can get him back. Right, so it continues to be evaluated by the doctor and the trainer. He's day to day. And other than that, um, other than Cosby being out with the fracture in his foot, uh, we should be healthy. You know, 
Clemson, uh, we played them in a non-conference. They, they, they were good. Uh, we didn't play well. They, they played well. We got to do a lot better. Um, you know, they're going to make adjustments from the first game. We're going to make adjustments. We, they, they were way too comfortable shooting it. They shot over 50% from three when we played them at our place. So, and particularly in the second half, they were eight of 11. So we got to do a better job with their shooters. I thought we did a good job last night with Carolina's shooters, making sure that their main shooters didn't uh, get loose for free threes. So it's, uh, you know, short night because we, uh, or a long night, however you want to look at it. Not much sleep, long night, not a lot of sleep, trying to get ready. But I think our players look pretty locked in uh, early this morning when we went through video. And we'll, uh, we'll have a short, light practice here this afternoon and then try to get them rested. And I think fresh legs, fresh minds important uh, for the game tomorrow. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Start in the second row. Hold, we'll get a mic holder. Mike, over to you. There you go. Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. Coach, do you like that you played this team before? Do you think that's an advantage or a disadvantage they have tape on you? They have tape on us. We have tape on them. You know, I don't mind it. You know, we've told our players from game one to game two who's going to make the best adjustments. Sometimes... We did. Sometimes we didn't. You know, we, we I thought we did play better against Mississippi State second time around than even the first time we won both. Thought we improved from the first time we played Tennessee to the second time. Wasn't good enough to beat them, but they're a really good team. Uh, Auburn wasn't. You know, we didn't. So there's some of the times we made better improvements from game one to game two. We're going to definitely need to be the one to make better improvements this game because they, they were significantly better than we were at our place and we you know we, we didn't handle their physicality well I think we're playing better handling physicality more uh, North Carolina was a physical team I thought we did a good job handling that one so you know this is a uh, this is one that I'm probably glad that we played them early so our players have some idea of the physicality and how good their bigs are because they're, they're you know they, they their bigs hurt us a lot inside and their guards hurt us too I mean we didn't do a good job taking away their best players. I thought, you know, Hall and Gerard and Hunter all, all got off on us pretty good the first time. We'll go to the third row. Get a mic over to you. Katie Mendem from Bama Central. Um, talking to the players a little bit about whether they view this as a revenge game. Aaron said, as a competitor, it, that's part of it. Is that something you're using as motivation for this game, or is being the first team to get to the Final Four in program history, motivation enough? I mean, we'll use whatever we can at this point, whatever we think our, resonates with our players. But I think as a competitor, if you've got some pride, you got embarrassed on your home court earlier in the year and you got a chance to redeem it on a neutral floor, I'd think that'd be a little extra motivation for you right there. But, you know, Clemson's also trying to make their first Final Four. They're going to be extra motivated, so... We can't just rely on being motivated because the other team's going to be motivated too. We got to be locked into a scouting report, focused, detail oriented. Th things that we've been good at here in the tournament that maybe we lacked uh, during the course of the year at different times. We'll keep it in the third row. Josh Peter with USA Today. I was t asking the players about the strong finishes you guys have had the last two games and what's allowed you to do it. And Ryland pointed out it's not what happened with the non-conference uh, schedule. And sort of learn from that. What has your team learned? How have you been able to put it together the last two games? Yeah, we we try to talk through, you know, what do we learn from every game? You know, and I, I talk to our players if, you know, when we got here late before the NCAA tournament started, like what what have we learned? Like from the losses, particularly, like they're not failures if you learn from them, you know. There's lots of things in life that don't go the way you want them to go. And if you, if you learn from it, it can be a win, even if it was a loss at the moment. So, you know, one of, one of the big things was our last eight minutes, last 12 minutes of the games, we weren't good in the non-conference. You know, we were tired. We made bad decisions. We folded. We collapsed. So 
you know, I took that time out about eight minutes. We had the media time out shortly after that. Both those time out, I think the the energy was like, like we got to go now. Now we still ended up being down. You know, they made a little run there. R.J. Davis got going a little bit, and they took the lead. I thought our guys showed a lot of resilience. So we, we talked to them about sometimes you're going to do things right, and you just, the other teams going to make tough shots, and you just got to go to the next play. So, like, let's quit dwelling on it, not feel sorry for ourselves. Let's go to the next play. Let's The last play should have no uh, impact on the next play, and I think we've done a pretty good job moving on to the next play, especially at the end of games just figuring out a way to get some some wins. We'll go to Jordan here in the second row. Uh, Jordan Mendoza, USA Today. Um, you're at a school that's always going to be associated with football, with the amount of success it's had on the football field. You've mentioned you know, that we have a chance to go to the first Final Four in school history. Um, and also, this is your second Elite Eight ever in school history. What does this moment mean for Alabama basketball, and what could it mean to go to its first um, Final Four? Yeah, we got Two schools like that here, right? Alabama and Clemson playing in L.A. It, most people think we're playing a Rose Bowl out here probably, right? Okay, so the basketball Rose Bowl. We, uh, I, I think it'd be huge, you know, because we came in and Alabama football is obviously the best football program in the country over the course of college football. In my opinion, they've got all kinds of national championships, but it's been – you know, multiple sports have won national championships at Alabama. The, the athletic department as a whole is a championship level athletic department. And we need to get men's basketball up up to the level that, that a lot of other sports are at. So, you know, if you could make, you know, the Final Four, obviously winning the national championships is the biggest thing, but the Final Four is huge, men's basketball. So if you can get to a Final Four and kind of put yourself on that stage, I think we've been able to recruit some high-level players players want to play here we, we've won two SEC regular seasons two SEC tournaments since we've been here we, we've won a lot but we've never been to a final four so making a final four would be very big for the program would show that we're competing with all the best programs in the country for the biggest thing you know you're trying to win a national championship well final four is that step right before winning a national championship and we haven't been to Final Four yet, so this would this would be the biggest win in the history of Alabama basketball if we could pull it off. And I think our players understand the enormity of the game, and I think their preparation, their effort will match their understanding of how important this game is. Next in the third row here, Coach Ben Golliver, Washington Post. Uh, last night you were talking about the challenges of game planning on a quick turnaround. You know, from a Thursday game to a Saturday game, and we had the pleasure of having some of your grad students sitting behind us, and I think they were the loudest, most locked-in people in the entire building during that game. I'm curious, what role or responsibilities do those guys have in helping get you ready for a team like Clemson? And then in-game, what exactly is their role? Because it seems like they were hype men. They really knew Carolina's playbook, it seemed like, as well, from what I could overhear, and just curious what role they have for you guys. Yeah, we, we rely on our GAs a lot, and, and they're good. They um, they help with a lot. They help put the scouting. You know, they help the assistant in charge of the scout put the video together to go. So they're working ahead because I'm not going to look at the next team until we're done playing the current team. But they are. You know, they're working ahead all the time, and so they've got everything ready to hand to the assistant in charge of it when they need to. Um, goes from everything trying to listen to the vid video with the sound up, trying to get play calls off the sound and looking at sig hand signals to get play calls. So they're, they've got that all in their head. They've tried to teach it to everybody, but they, they know it pretty well. In the course of the game, we chart a lot of things. We chart offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency. They're charting that, like, you know, paint touches, different things we've got on the – I get an offensive sheet, a defensive sheet, a blue-collar sheet, and the general stats. So I got four sheets of paper in my hand every time out and they're responsible for three of those four, the offensive, defensive, and the blue collar one. So, you know, the GAs along with our regular ma undergrad managers, you know, do a lot of work for us. So it, it, it's cool that everybody's super invested in wins and losses from your head coach down to your managers to everybody in the program. And I think we've got that. I think it's part of the reason we've been winning 
at the level we've been winning over the last four years because you get everybody in the program super invested in winning and losing, and you, you, it's nice that you're able to sit by some of them that aren't even on the bench and they're super invested in winning and losing. We're here third row, and then we'll come to you guys. Coach, we talk about your play, Chris Stewart, Crimson Tide Sports Network. We talk about your players or how you as a staff help them to understand the moment and, and deal with everything that they're in right now. But how do you personally manage the moment when it's a new experience for you as well? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, it kind of takes me back to when I was interviewing with Danny White to get my first head coaching job in Division One, and Keith Dambride had kind of been running the league in the MAC at Akron, and he's made the tournament at Duquesne this year, and he's going to retire. He's a great coach, and he kind of asked me the question, you know, when you look down and see Coach Dambride, with like it's my five players against his five players, it's not me against him. It's you know, it's the same thing. We, you know, we coached against some pretty good coaches in our league, coached against some pretty good coaches. At the end of the day, the ball goes up. I'm coaching my five guys on the floor, everybody else coach, and I got to prepare myself to coach the five guys on the floor and the guys on the bench. And I've done that hundreds of times as a high school coach. And you kind of just lose yourself in, in the game and start coaching. So how do I prepare myself? I mean, you know, I didn't have to do all this at Romulus, but I coached a few hundred games at Romulus. And when the ball goes up, it's not that much different. There's a few more cameras on me around here. There's a few more people in the stands. My players need to feel the energy coming from me. They need to know that I know what I'm doing, so I got to prepare myself so that I'm the most prepared coach going in, and they know it, and they've got confidence in that. I got to sell them on the fact that we're the most prepared team because we're going to be – our guys always go into games with a ton of confidence knowing we got the scouting report down. They just got to execute it and play hard. That's what I do. So I don't – after the season's over, if we can win another game and you understand that you made a Final Four, there'll probably be some time to relax and reminisce on it and think about how great it was. But right now we got to win another game. Like this doesn't happen very often. We've only been to one other Elite Eight in the history of Alabama. It was 20 years ago. You don't want to take this for granted. I can't. I told our players, don't, you know, Coach Saban calls it rat poison all the time. But if you wanted, you could get on your phone and look at the social media and, and type your name in and see hundreds of people talking about how great you were. That has nothing to do with preparing to play the next game. So I told them, if you, if you, if you want to get to a Final Four, you got to be disciplined enough to put that rat poison out, get locked in on what we need to do for the next 24 hours, be prepared to beat this team. Because anything else is a total distraction. I said, like, like every minute for the next 24 hours needs to go into recovery with the trainer, and some of that's a nap and sleep, some of it being with the trainer, or preparation to win the game. Anything else, if you're not disciplined enough to stay off social media and not waste a bunch of time doing that, I don't know how serious you are about winning. The same thing goes for me. Like I don't keep any social media on my phone during the season because I think it's Nothing against you reporters, and maybe it's the people out there on Twitter that aren't reporters, but you win a game and you're the best thing ever. You lose a game and you're the worst coach. I, I, can't, I can't live my life like this. and I, So I don't have social media on my phone during the season. I can get on it on the computer if I choose, but you get on it, next thing you know, you wasted an hour that you should have been preparing for a team. So i got to be disciplined to get myself ready to play. The players need to be disciplined to get themselves ready to play. And once the ball goes up, we got 40 minutes of being locked in, super intense. You can't kind of ask the players, why do you play? Well, why do I coach? I got this competitive nature about me. There, You can't match that 40 minutes of competitiveness with anything else you do in life. And I love it. I got to get myself ready to do it. And I don't think it, I don't think there's much else. I got to get ready to coach this game just like I get ready to coach any other game. Go to the fourth row. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jonah Prell, Arizona PBS. But building off of that, you're talking about kind of your coaching mindset there. Uh, have, have there been any uh, previous coaching mentors or peers of yours that have reached out to you, maybe a text or something, giving you some words of advice uh, to give you uh, that direction and, and tell your players like you just said? Yeah, I mean, Coach Saban's uh, been good. The, the whole next deal, 
I kind of pull off a conversation with him. He texts to me, next play, next case, you know, he and it, he doesn't do much text. He didn't text at all. I probably shouldn't even say text because I think he's not supposed to text. But now that he's not coaching anymore, maybe he texts. So if I wasn't supposed to tell anybody he texts, I apologize to Coach Saban. But he did send me a short short text, and he, he, he was good with it. He's been great. He's a, a resource I've got. He's still got an office on campus. So I'm going to use that resource. I think he's the best team sports coach in the modern history of team sports and college athletics. Like, he's great to have there. And there's some other coaches. I don't know that I'd necessarily have mentors. Um, you know, obviously, Bobby Hurley hired me. Bobby's been great. I'm friends with Danny. He's doing a great job. But I haven't talked to them a whole lot there. Danny's trying to get his own team to a Final Four and doing a pretty good job, it looks like. But talk to some retired coaches. I made a couple calls before the NCAA tournament, just to some coaches. I, I called Frank Martin because they, they, South Carolina had, if you go back and look when they made their final four run there, they didn't, they were kind of on a down stretch. They had lost a few, like we, we, we weren't playing our best basketball going into this tournament. Neither were they. Just how do you get your mindset to change? I actually talked to Coach Bayheim, who did it twice at Syracuse, weren't playing their best at the end of the regular season. ACC tournament, got a run, made a final four, like, how do you get – so I reached out to those guys, and they were great. They talked to me about the whole thing. But, you know, I don't – I was a high school coach, and then I coached for Bobby Early for two years, and then I became a head coach. So I haven't really worked under – it's been a long time, you know, other than the two years with Coach Early, and he was great. I mean, he's been great to me, and Danny's been great to me. But outside of those two years, it's been a long time since I worked under somebody. It's kind of more – Older coaches that have been retired that you kind of reach out to, or older coaches in the business. I, I you know, I talked to Coach Izzo. He's, he's been great to me when I was in Detroit. He's great. He was great to me. He talked to me about North Carolina just because they had played him and I knew him. I, I spent all kinds of time up watching them practice. I, you know, I really looked up to him when I was a high school coach in Detroit, and he and he was great. But that little, little couple guys here and there. We got time for one more question. Go ahead. <clears throat> Miss Terry said that uh, Nick Saban sent his first email too recently. So oh, you're does, in the clear there. I okay, think. he's in the clear. So yeah. he's he's texting, emailing, he's and technology and, savant now. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask about this is your 11th night on the road together. Just how is that? How have players handled that? Has there been a benefit to that, knowing that if you went home early, that there'll be the end of it for you this season? Yeah, I hope they like being with each other, so they they want to spend a few more nights together on the road in the hotel, but. I think they've, they've gotten close. I think our leadership's been great. Guys are pulling for each other. I would shoot. I, you saw when when your best player, you know, all year and Mark Sears needs to shoot. I mean, he almost sleepwalks to 20 points on some nights. Like, he didn't get to 20 last night. He was as happy as anybody. He was telling me to run stuff for Grant Nelson late in the game. Like, you know, I think it guys get a little closer being with each other all the time when they get close and there's that – Coach Murphy's word. Coach Murphy came in. Coach Murphy's been texting me a little bit too with softball. He's been great, but he's, uh, you know, they taking on this old Mudita. He explained to our guys what Mudita means, and we've kind of got shirts made and kind of tried to make it our deal. You know, I, I think when you spend time together, this much time on the road, you kind of get to know each other, pull for each other better. We, we do this retreat, you know, before. Classes starting to fall in August, which I think gives them it's like kind of like 48 hours where you just stay together in one one house. Now we're not all in the same house; we're in the same hotel and it's right down the hall from each other. But it's been good. I um, like I said, I hope they want to keep staying in the hotel together because if we can get one more win, we'll, we'll have another week together next week. We are going to go home this time. We're not staying on the West Coast for three straight weeks, so. Win or lose, we will be back on Easter Sunday in Alabama, and then hopefully, if it's a win, then we'll turn back around and come out to the uh, West Coast to go to Phoenix uh, if we're fortunate enough to be playing in Phoenix uh, next weekend. Thanks, Coach.